Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Replay. Hello. Um, we are very excited to be here um, and sharing our story of pioneering efficiency and innovation at Salesforce. And uh, yeah, here we are. Before we begin, I want to make sure we have this. <laughs> Let me remind you that uh, you know you includes all humans and any live uh, AI bots or future gen uh, generative AI engines who might scrape this presentation. That please make sure uh, you make all your purchase decisions based on the currently available products and features. First of all, I would like to say thank you to uh, Temporal for providing us this opportunity to present and also being an awesome partner in our journey in Salesforce. Then I also want to thank you to uh, all of you for being here as well as being an awesome community, uh, part of the you know, giving back in the open source uh, community. And we, we are very gra grateful for that. I also want to thank you to all my Salesforce Ohana, um, our amazing customers here and partners. Uh, I'm so glad to you know, run into some of you and uh, see you here, so appreciate that. Uh, really, really you know, uh, appreciating this opportunity and you know, I, we totally believe that the future of orchestration is with Temporal. So currently, I'm running uh, Temporal as a service um, as a self-hosted uh, uh, service in Salesforce, providing it as a service for our Salesforce customers. And in these last two days, I have run into a few folks who have been asking me, uh, hey, tell me, why did you even decide to even run this as a team? Or uh, why Temporal? Or, uh, how, how is the adoption in, uh, in Salesforce for Temporal? And I thought I could address some of those uh, as part of this talk and uh, share some of the you know, learnings that we had um, as part of this whole journey and make sure that you know, it, it helps all of you as well. Because we all know that there are a lot of solutions around, especially in any enterprise company, uh, we have, uh, you probably might have heard that we all run into uh, you know, problems where, hey, there are, everybody starts sort of reinventing the wheel and you know, come up with solution. And we all think that, hey, is this the right choice? Is that you know, something that we want to use? Why do we make new investments? Is that even going to give us ROI? And a lot of these actually challenges our decision making and uh, it sometimes gets harder for us to influence our leadership or the teams around us. And so it's a real problem, and we all understand that. So I wanted to share you know, from my personal experience, uh, as you, you might know, Salesforce is, a, is, is an early um, SaaS provider company, and we are providing CRM as a platform for all our customers. Basically, that is uh, me working in Salesforce platform for more than eight years helped me, uh, or actually it fundamentally changed my uh, you know, thinking or overall how I can you know, get into this business of making it as a service. And so that, I, I thought this is something, it's, it's in my DNA now. Wanted to share also you know, one of my personal story. How many of you know what this picture is? Anybody, what this is? Yeah? It's a screen printing, right. It's amazing to see, at least, you know, some of you know it. And uh, so, long story, uh, growing up, um, you know, I wanted to share. Uh, basically, when uh, my teachers were, uh, sorry, my parents were teachers and uh, you might have seen in the elementary school, there are a lot of you know, charts you see in the, in the rooms, and teachers try to make an attempt to make it by hand. They want to get too close to the, the kids and so that they can you know, teach with that, and that's the purpose. But we all know that uh, either they don't have a lot of time or creativity or experience, 
And this was the problem, or at least that's what my parents, being in the same field, they realized that this is a problem and they need to, to do something. So that's where they thought, okay, let's, let's you know, start creating these charts. Um, one fine summer, my father went for a crash course of screen printing, and uh, I really wanted to uh, put this picture because it shows how messy it is. And uh, think about it as a newbie, uh, you know, as a family, we're starting that journey, and um, you know, we ended up making uh, I mean, a lot of failures in the beginning. We definitely wasted a lot of material. Uh, you can come out at our home and you'll see all the charts all around the house and, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, those were the early lessons and uh, it, it really uh, made me think it, it's messy. It was very chaotic, obviously, and uh, those were the sort of the, uh, if I remember back then, actually helped me learn, hey, something needed to be done and what can you do? And it's a sequence of, you know, steps you have to automate in some way to get, you know, get better at it. And, uh, you know, that is how uh, basically we started realizing from our own mistakes and how can we do better. Uh, we have to make sure that there are, you know, the processes are perfected. For example, for drying the charts, you want to have some racks for it, right? So my father ended up building it, and you know, that's how it helped us. So every step of the way, it needs to be perfected, and you know, that is what basically helped me uh, to think about if you do it right and make sure you, you bring some innovation in your automation, you can achieve you know, this orchestration. And that is uh, something I wanted to you know, share from my personal experience, how it actually helped me thinking about it and how we brought Temporal as a service inside Salesforce. So I, we, we want to share this in four stages, uh, inception, adoption, growth, and scale with AI. Basically, how, we, how it all started, um, how the adoption happened, and then uh, for the growth, how we used our learnings from the adoption and made it happen uh, for the current growth, but we also see there's a lot of growth coming in and how we are going to scale it better with the AI. So let's dive it into uh, inception. Uh, it all starts with a problem statement, and uh, I was owning a infrastructure service which uh, needed some or orchestration. Uh, obviously, at that point, uh, we were also going through a huge transformation. Uh, Salesforce was going through a huge transformation of a public cloud, and you know, I, this is a public news. All of you might know this. This must have been the the biggest ever sort of a transformation for the. Uh, industry, uh, how we came up with the Hyperforce uh, platform uh, and architecture. And so that is when we started thinking about it. How can we think about our problem creatively and figure out what is the solution that will work best? And we conducted a study with multiple you know, tools out there in the industry. And obviously, you know, there has been a huge transformation or evolution that has happened from DAG to you know, conductor, cadence, our Go workflow, you, you know it, and finally, temporal. Same time, Salesforce also went through our own evolution of you know, learning about what those uh, you know, products that we have or tools that we have that we can use. And over the period of time, even my team actually ended up building you know, a couple of those orchestration engines. And we had our learnings. But we hit a point where we thought, hey, um, Either you continue investing in these and spend more, and obviously it's it's going to continue. And for the scale, is it going to actually scale? So, or you actually uh, stop inventing the wheel, right? We we know now that there are better tools out there, or you know something that we can leverage. Why not leverage it? And this is the this is the principle. Um, you know, wanted to use that. Uh, to realign it with our priorities and make sure that we don't reinvent it. So this is where you know, we thought by leveraging, we will actually achieve a lot of alignment with our existing systems and drive impact. So let's do it that way and uh, leverage um, you know, to the uh, greater heights. 
So we came up with the um, vision statement. I'm sorry. <clears throat> So um, you can you can see uh, that even before we provide it as a service, we wanted to make sure. <coughs> pardon me. Um, we come up a, come up with a vision statement that can be uh, you know used for all our uh, for the Salesforce scale. We make sure that it is there, and uh, it fuels the trust, customer success, agility, innovation, and the overall business growth. With that, um, <clears throat> I'll hand it over to uh, Parin. All right. Thank you, Madhuri. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Parin Maru. So, yeah, so far we have looked at the inception of Temporal at Salesforce and how we began this journey. Now, let's uh, uh, walk along and see what the next phases of the journey were, which is uh, adoption and growth. So back in 2021, when we introduced Temporal at Salesforce, as, as Madhuri mentioned, we had like a couple of internal use cases that we wanted to solve using a, a sophisticated orchestration engine. But soon we realized how powerful it is, um, the features that it offers, um, all the goodies that come out of the box. And it, it really, uh, we were mind blown by all the, uh, the ecosystem that Temporal provided. And we began influencing a lot of other early adopters onto this platform. And uh, towards the mid middle to end of 2023, we actually started seeing a lot of uh, other customer services getting onboarded onto our, uh, our uh, platform. We knew that we had a gr great opportunity at hand that will unify a solution for all of our customers within Salesforce. And that's what we started uh, promoting and working towards. Next, let's look at uh, from the inception when we went to the adoption phase, how we actually helped our customers get onboarded onto our managed service offering. Uh, so we have always been providing white glove support to our customers where we work with them, we understand their use case, we understand if temporal will be a fit for their problem statement or is it something else. We speak with our customers, we um, uh, help them with their deployment strategies, their connectivity patterns to our temporal clusters as, as we uh, manage self-hosted clusters. Basically, overall end-to-end -end design and architecture, we work with our customers and ensure that, yes, temporal does solve the problem that they are uh, fighting against. Uh, in order to do that, we have a dedicated Slack channel where customers can reach us and uh, seek assistance. We also run regular office hours where customers can get better engagement. This is a very high level architecture of uh, Salesforce in general, the Salesforce platform. Uh, so at the lowest layer, we have public cloud, where we leverage some of the major cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure. On top of it, we have this blue layer, which is our custom Hyperforce platform that we have built. Uh, it's, it's an abstraction on top of the public cloud. The main objective of the Hyperforce platform is to provide um, uh, a layer of abstraction. So, uh, abstract out all the you know, intricacies of the different cloud providers at the bottom so that we give a uniform experience to all of our Salesforce uh, developers as well as our customers. On top of that, we have the actual Salesforce platform that uh, uh, fuels all the different customers uh, that we have, uh, different clouds within Salesforce or um, uh, verticals, if you will, like marketing cloud, service cloud, um, data cloud, Slack, MuleSoft, and many more. Now, in this layered architecture, we decided to place Temporal in the middle layer, which is the Hyperforce layer. The benefit of that would be we can serve a majority of different customers from different verticals, different clouds, different substrates, and still be able to abstract out all the low-level uh, cloud provider details and give them a uniform experience as uh, providing a managed service. So that was our vision with this kind of architecture. Now, as I said, uh, sometime in 2023, when we started seeing a lot more use cases on board, uh, getting started to onboard uh, on to, onto our service and our managed platform, we soon realized 
providing high availability was really crucial for us. There are a few mission critical use cases where we wanted to ensure that we have really high availability. And since then, we have been striving there. So our goal is to, uh, we, have, we have been continuously striving to give four nines of availability, and that's what we, we have been working towards. So some of the things that we have done in order to reach there are, first is three AZ deployment. We ensure all of our temporal control plane, all the co components, whether it's the compute layer, the persistent store, everything adheres to three AZ deployment within the public cloud. Auto scaling, all of the, the entire temporal control plane is auto scale. We have configured it to auto scale. And not just that, we en highly encourage all of our customers to also auto scale their worker services so they get the same level of high availability that, that we have. 50% over provisioning. So this is one of our key uh, high availability requirement within the company, within Salesforce, where we want uh, our control plane to always be 50, uh, over provisioned by 50%. So that way we are highly, highly available and meeting our SLO, SLOs. Lately, we have been experimenting with active passive deployment. So there are a certain critical features, uh, critical customer workloads which, which they are, who need this kind of active passive uh, deployment strategy. And that's where we have been playing around with um, global namespaces and the failover uh, replication uh, technology that uh, Temporal offers. Uh, it's work in progress, but that's one of our, another pillar that we are uh, focusing towards right now. We invest heavily in terms of testing, so we perform regular chaos testing for our control plane or, or, or for, for our temporal cluster, so that way we intentionally inject failures and faults into our uh, cluster, so in order to uh, validate whether our services are in, indeed highly available and resilient and can withstand these failures and faults. We have also been uh, recently working towards integrating service, service mesh for intra-cluster communication or communication between temporal services within the cluster. This will help us reap the benefits that the mesh layer provides, which are like rate limiting, authorization, authentication, uh, certificate management, and many more. Overall, our goal uh, or our charter has been to not just provide features for our customers, but at the same time, focus, really focus on availability and reliability of our, of our platform so that all of our customers can uh, trust our platform and use it for various different mission critical um, use cases. All right, so all this while, yeah, we saw a uh, great adoption in last few months or uh, uh, almost a year, year and a half, but at the same time, there were a lot of learnings that, that we had along the way. So I would just highlight some of them. First, first and foremost, ease of adoption. We quickly realized as we started onboarding new customers Giving a good customer experience, uh, uh, an amazing developer experience was really critical if we wanted to uh, ensure we have uh, great adoption and growth in the future. And that's where we have been investing so far. Supporting multiple clouds. As I said, Salesforce is really diverse. There are a lot of different clouds or verticals within the company. And in order to support all these different clouds from uh, different areas, we are working towards ensuring that our managed service offering, ha uh, we make all the necessary changes or necessary enhancements in our uh, platform so that we can support all these use cases. Availability, as I already touched, availability is really paramount to us and we have been constantly striving to reach four nines of availability. Finally, we have been running a special interest group uh, within Salesforce. This is a group or a community of temporal enthusiasts or temporal experts. Over, uh, again, the goal is to share the knowledge and uh, develop expertise within the community. All right. Now we have looked at two phases in our journey, uh, the inception phase, the adoption phase. Let's look at the growth phase and how we took it forward from, from where we were. So as I said, from our learnings, in order to support more and more adoption and foster exponential growth, we made some of the key investments in different areas. So first was self-service customer onboarding. Uh, and I'll talk about each of these a little bit in detail in upcoming slides. Second is reach notifications via Slack and email. And finally, providing a paved path uh, journey for our customers to help in, in their adoption and development journey. All right. So, Self-service customer onboarding. So when we we were uh, 
we started uh, getting more adoption and our early customer, uh, uh, when they started using our services and started onboarding, we soon realized that it was really painful. The onboarding process was painful, meaning uh, uh, our initial customers had to wait at least for uh, two weeks in order to get onboarded, get their namespaces created, get their search attributes created, and get actually start uh, working on uh, with Temporal. And it, even though uh, even though this turnaround time was really excruciating, more than that, it needed manual in one uh, intervention or manual uh, uh, toil from our team, the Temporal platform team. And then we reali realized this this is extremely poor uh, user experience and at the same time it is not at all scalable for for the growth that we anticipated and that's the reason we decided to automate this entire process and the way we did that is we we and I'll talk more but we basically now uh, the current state is our customers just need to perform three steps and they are onboarded they are good to go step number one run a few CLI commands from the terminal step number two get the pull request PR approved and merged. And finally, step three, perform the release by clicking a few buttons in the UI. And that's it. With these three steps, they get onboarded, they get their namespaces created, they, they get their search attributes created within a few hours. So we not just uh, improved the turnaround time from a couple weeks to a few hours, but we also eliminated the involvement of our platform team from this entire process. So made, made this entire process self-service so customers can drive it and uh, we can scale the way we want. Over here, I want to call out one thing. So this entire automation was possible by uh, has been possible by leveraging an open source Terraform provider called Temporal Platacard. So it's an open source uh, uh, tem uh, Terraform provider. When we adopted it, uh, it didn't have the, fe the functionality for um, uh, managing namespaces and search attribute resources. So that's something we contributed back to the upstream. We added it back so that it's not just us, but people like us in the community can leverage those fee functionality and automate their use cases if they want to. The other major pain point that we <coughs> kept hearing from our customers was about uh, around the observability and the notifications for the uh, for their workflow execution events so uh, basically we uh, created or we uh, introduced a new intermediary layer so this is a very high level architecture of how we solve this problem we introduced an intermediary layer called the temporal proxy service that fronts all our temporal clusters or it, it fronts the actual temporal front end service what this means is all the inco uh, requests incoming into our temporal clusters, they are intercepted by the proxy service, and the proxy service relays all the key events to our custom Salesforce notification platform, and our customers, they can just subscribe to this notification platform, and they, they can get proactively notified about their workflow executions via Slack or email. So with this feature, basically now we have, like, bunch of uh, temporal clusters uh, like uh, running across the globe so we don't expect all of our cust or we don't want all of our customers to keep babysitting the temporal ui dashboards in different uh, regions and different clusters rather they can just subscribe to this reach notification platform and they'll get notified for their uh, workflow execution events so this was another big announcement that announcement that we did to improve the customer experience finally we have been providing paved path to our customer throughout the uh, onboarding and their uh, development journey. So one big step over there is we provide uh, a library of common integrations. This is basically uh, a, a collection of common utilities and activities that uh, different customers within Salesforce can leverage. The goal over here is, again, we want our customers to just focus on their business application, automate and orchestrate their business use cases. And this library, or we take care of a lot of like boilerplate code or other mundane tasks, and the customers don't have to spend time on it. So they are not, I mean, the immediate benefit is they are seeing faster path to production because they don't have, like not every customer has to reinvent the wheel and write the same logic or the same activity everywhere. Rather, we provide it out of the box and they just focus on their use cases. Okay, along with that, we also, <clears throat> provide um, uh, rich documentation, best practices, code snippets. So everything that a customer would need along their way uh, 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 in the onboarding process, we provided them for, uh, provide all that for them. Okay, finally, uh, this is the last slide, I think. So 
yeah i mean we have talked about uh, the adoption how we have grew uh, how we grew in last few years and madhur will talk more on that but this is a quick customer portfolio right now that we have so back in 2021 when we introduced temporal we as i said we had like couple internal use cases now here we have seven uh, seven big uh, salesforce clouds or salesforce verticals already using temporal there are like 35 plus uh, teams within this clouds using temporal for a lot of different use cases marketing cloud say uh, slack a lot lot of them all right with them we are into our final phase of the journey which is the future from here where we see ourselves in fy26 and beyond and i'll uh, have madhuri finish the talk thank you thank you parin um as you know uh, we have a dreamforce conference actually going on right uh, well it's getting wrapped up this week in san francisco ai is big on top of mind for salesforce and we don't want to definitely stay behind um so just wanted to give a sneak peek on what we are planning with the ai and uh, how we want to again improve the the developer agility overall uh, there is there are a lot of up, you know opportunities for us code generation and optimization some of the prototyping we have already done for that and we we have started you know experimenting with that so that folks can quickly generate the the activities in workflows uh, we also have a our own customer support channel for temporal customers and uh, they are hoping that we can use all the generative ai and natural you know all the uh, the models that we have created uh, customers can just give a query and then we can you know fetch the documents that we have or we can also fetch the documents from the the temporal.io so that they get the richer experience in their uh, overall <clears throat> support operations and that will definitely save us at least 70% time in overall uh, you know support so uh, this is a picture um, again uh, when you saw early 23 we only had handful of customers and now in uh, just over a year uh, we have grown at least uh, 10 times in number of you know workflow executions number of teams are you know over 25 teams right now using and you saw that you know whole uh, the cloud sort of a diagram uh, we are growing 30% quarter over quarter and um, as i said 10 times and we have 70 plus clusters we are managing across uh, you know 17 countries so that is the scale that we are trying to operate and make sure that high availability and scaling is top of our mind again um you know that's with that goal we want to enable all our customers uh, at salesforce and when as a team and you know bring efficiency in innovation uh, our mission is to make an impact and build this community our lrp definitely aligns with our company's uh, you know goals which is you know ai powered scalable compliant and multi substrate uh, provide basically being the multi substrate provider for all our customers and this sort of you know is the bigger fan you can see we are going after and aiming to make sure that uh, you know we can go in every one of those clouds and today we just we we think we just has we just have begun i mean the journey has just begun if we go in every one of those customers and in the uh, clouds and you know start we definitely see 10 times will be coming next year with that growth with that i hope this was inspiring enough and um, you learn from our journey thank you so much and i don't know if you have time for questions but uh, open for Yeah, Parin and Maduri, thank you for that presentation. Uh, we do have a short moment for questions. If anybody wants to ask some quick questions, I can run the microphone around. Okay, just say your name and where you're from, if you can, and then ask your question. Uh, hey guys, uh, Tandeep Sidhu from Capital One. Um, you mentioned this uh, custom SDK that you've. Uh, created that shared with the teams is that a wrapper around the temporal sdk or like an additional library you want to come up sir yeah so it's not a custom sdk uh, it's a uh, common library right now that we support so our customers can import those uh, utilities if they need to uh, but right now it's not an sdk but is it a wrapper around the 
Uh, it's not a wrapper. I would say it's more of an enhancement. So those are like uh, right now the operations that typically a Salesforce customer would do, right? Uh, integrating with some of our internal systems, calling some of our internal API. So we have kind of given them those operations out of the box to our customers. A lot of the boilerplate experience, we are just taking it away with all of that for customers. Okay, we've got time for one more quick question, then we'll be done. Hi, my name is Chris Robinson from Outreach. Um, one question was, uh, I was struck by your goal where you said you, you want to support multi-tenant loads. And like, um, how does that impact your deployment uh, of the temporal clusters in Salesforce? So if I understood the question, I mean, right now we are, every cluster is multi-tenant. Uh, the, the number of clusters that we run, everything is multi-tenant. And in terms of deployment, as you said, so we have a very rigorous deployment process that we follow. So it's a staggered deployment going through various different staggers across different geos at different times. So if, if that was your question. Uh, I, I, I think probably a... Uh, Multi-substrate. I was wondering if it was multi-tenant for the orgs you support, or you're talking about multi-tenants in terms of where you deploy it. Multi-tenant for the namespaces or the teams that we support. Okay, can we get another round of applause for Parin and Madhu? Thank you so much. Thank you very much.